what's up guys today we have a guest in our channel uh, we are going to interview a devops engineer uh, hey Ruben how are you hello I'm fine thanks and how are you I'm good thank you thanks for accepting the invitation I hope you will share your skills and expertise with the freelancers who want to become a devops engineer or in general you uh, who want to know about your freelancing success story Sure, I will try to uh, give some advices and uh, maybe share some stories uh, from my freelancing career. So how did you start your career? I started my career as a system administrator in 2014 and recently, two years ago, I just uh, got interested in DevOps, in infrastructure automation, in CI/CD pipelines, in microservices, in Kubernetes especially and uh, I was able to uh, gain a solid experience during this time period while I, I was working on uh, various projects and uh, various environments. And how did you become a freelancer? There is uh, nothing special. Uh, I just had uh, one Upwork account that uh, I created but I wasn't using. Uh, and one day I just decided to give it a try and try to find my first job there. And uh, maybe I'm lucky because I was able to find my first clients uh, from day one. What is your great achievement as a DevOps engineer and a freelancer? I think my biggest achievement is understanding of business requirements and customer needs and providing them solutions for their main problems. And I believe uh, every engineer should uh, have this uh, goal as a primary one because, uh, of course, we are using a lot of technologies, tools in our work, but uh, most important for the client is actually end result and having complete understanding of business requirements is uh, very important to provide customer what he needs. Is freelancing a side hustle for you or is it your main source of income? I have full-time job now and I am freelancing at my free time for about 20 hours per week. But I can consider to start freelancing full-time in future maybe because I have a good reputation, I have good feedbacks from clients on different freelancing platforms. So I think I will be able to find jobs easily if I decide to go full-time. And how do you keep a work-life balance? It's really hard to keep work-life balance when you have one full-time and one part-time jobs. <clears throat> so only thing that uh, I'm able to do right now is just to allocate uh, Sundays, for example, to just uh, have a day of rest. But uh, I think nothing more than that because I really work much. What's your hourly rate, if you don't mind me asking? So my hourly rate changed many times during my freelancing career and that's why there are many contracts on Upwork, for example, with completely different hourly rates. But right now my hourly rate is $35 per hour, which can be changed based on client or project requirements, starting from $25 to $40 or $45. And what's the average for a DevOps engineer, like uh, for beginners and for uh, experienced ones? Like, is there an average hourly rate? So if we are talking about Upwork, I think beginners can start from 10 or 15 dollars per hour and most experienced engineers can earn up to 50 dollars per hour. And I think that uh, it's not actually easy to earn more than that because there is a big competition on Upwork and many clients in Upwork are just uh, people from US or uh, Europe that are looking for more cheaper work for them. And actually with that high rate, they can find uh, some specialists near them. Mm, that makes sense. And uh, what advice would you give to um, beginner DevOps engineers? I think only advice that I can give is to focus uh, more on theoretical things and well-known best practices because they are really important and if you can't uh, find the need for them from the beginning uh, you will actually get that to that point when you realize that you actually need more theoretical in-depth knowledge of IT and uh, 
IT processes in general. And what would you tell those who are already specialists but want to start freelancing? I can advise them to start by small fixed price projects and try to complete them as good as possible and maybe earnings won't be that big as you might expect but you will get a lot of positive feedbacks and from my experience I can say that it's really good to have and uh, before the contract with the client ends you can always uh, remind them to write feedback and uh, not skip that part of course uh, you don't need to mention about writing a good feedback because clients should be uh, free to describe his experience working with you is there any useful uh, link or material that you would like to share i think the best way of learning about freelancing is actually start to freelance and that's why i think uh, we can leave the link to TopTel and subscribers will be able to get their bonuses and uh, start their careers as a freelancer in a very big and stable platform with a huge commun community. Now tell us about your best client and your client communication in general. It's quite difficult for me to select the best client because I was working with many great clients during my freelancing career and about communication with the client the uh, first thing that i would like to recommend is uh, always be honest about time that you will be able to allocate about your knowledge skills and experience and also i can recommend to understand the client's requirements as good as possible and that's why i usually schedule short calls with client because it's really hard to communicate always with text messages because it can lead a misunderstanding and can potentially cause problems in future and short call is the best way to clarify things i think and what about the worst ones in my experience i can say that it's actually possible to have understanding with all clients and there is uh, not that much bad clients actually so only thing that i can mention i remember one of my first clients on upwork was a rich student from us that wanted me to do his homework so we had two fixed priced contracts with him at, at the end he was completely satisfied and the following day he just came and uh, was asking uh, me to make some changes and uh, it took some time uh, for me but I was able to explain him that if he uh, need changes after actual work was done and was approved uh, by him he need to create one more contract and uh, pay me by my hourly rate so we just ended up by having one more contract for uh, one hour do you have any hacks as a DevOps engineer and a freelancer uh, in your career and in your freelancing life? So as I mentioned before, it's really important to be honest with the client. And besides that, I can recommend to not to overload yourself by many projects. Try to get enough rest, try to get enough sleep because uh, your Productivity can become really low when you overload it, when you have many things to do and uh, you are not able to get enough rest. So it's better to have less work to do than be overloaded. Thank you, Ruben. These are all the questions I had for you. Uh, if others uh, have anything to add, we will wait for their comments. Thank you guys, if you are still with us, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I started a freelancer success story section. I hope you will be there one day. And if you are already an established freelancer, if you want to share your experience, don't forget to contact me and we will come up with an idea. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.